Okay, here we are, chapter one, ingredients of change, functions and limits. Now we're on section 1.5, exponential functions and models. <clears throat> so exponential functions are some of the most common functions used to model data after linear functions. So here there's a starting point, and then there's a multiplier applied at regular input intervals, such that the output changes by that constant multiplier every time the input changes. So <clears throat> what does that look like? Well, an exponential function is written in the form f of x equals a, that initial starting point, times the multiplier b raised to some x. So depending on what input value it is, you have b to that x power. <clears throat> so a is the starting value, b is the constant multiplier. And we can use technologies that do different things in this. And the key one is probably <clears throat> the Excel, what happens is it gives you f of x equals a e to the bx, and e to the b is equal to our b and the a times b to the x. So what you basically have to do is figure out what that b is, <clears throat> raise e to that power, and then you'll have what b is equal to. So here, let's see, for example, if we have f of x equals 0.264, times 2.423 raised to the power x. What is the starting value? Well, that's this piece right here. So that's 0 0.264. So we're starting at 0 0.264, whatever, whatever we're talking about. And our constant multiplier is 2.423. <clears throat> now, as we've talked about before, since that's greater than 1, we're going to be an increasing function. So that's what this is going to give us. Now, for the exponential model, um, we can look at it three ways here. Algebraically, we have what we've just seen, f of x equals a b times b to the x, okay? So that's our first thing. Then here, uh, the key is a cannot equal zero, because if it was zero, then we just have zero. And b has to be greater than zero, okay? So this is, this is how it's going to work for uh, increasing functions such as, as this one here. We want to have b greater than the zero. And the percentage changeover from one unit input is b minus 1 times 100%. So that percent changeover one unit of input is just taking whatever our b value is minus 1 times 100%. And a is the output corresponding to input of 0. So if we put in 0 for x, b to the 0 is 1 times a is a. <clears throat> so that's our output at time 0 or input 0. Now, verbally, an exponential model has a constant percentage change. So no matter you know, what, what steps we're taking, it's a constant percent, same percent going each time. Um, graphically, an exponential model with a positive A has the form of one of the two graphs. So now we're looking at the two graphs where A is greater than zero. Okay? And so what happens is we can go and say concave up, it's increasing, or concave down, it's decreasing, okay? And again, this one is going to when be have when you have your b is going to actually be less than zero. Now, concavity, well, you can either have concave up, which is increasing or decreasing, as we just saw here. These are concave up. Or we can have concave down, and we can have increasing or decreasing again. And what happens is, these two are not used for modeling because we're having a less than zero. And so we usually don't have that uh, for, for this class. Now, we might have some uh, models that actually have it, but usually we don't model that ourselves. <clears throat> okay, so as we can see, um, they do different things. When it's increasing concave up, you know, we're heading to infinity as we get larger and larger values of x. And here, as we head to larger values of x, the y goes to zero or the output goes to zero. Now here, the opposite, <clears throat> as we're increasing here our, uh, and our x goes to positive infinity, our y goes to zero. And here, as concave down decreasing, as x increases to infinity, y decreases to infinity. So kind of some differences there and, and, and we'll be <clears throat> using those to kind of solve some limits here in a little while. So in behavior, as seen in the four sets of graphs we just looked at, there are horizontal asymptotes at y equals zero, and that's, you know, right here. So we're going up to zero, that's a horizontal asymptote. And here, as we come down, there's going to be that horizontal asymptote right there. Um, the value of b will determine whether f approaches the horizontal asymptote or diverge from the horizontal axis as x increases with 
outbound. So, you know, when uh, B is between 0 and 1, the function approaches the horizontal asymptote as x increases. Okay, and so that's, oops, this one. As the x increases, it's going to approach that horizontal asymptote when B is between 0 and 1. So less than that 1 like we talked about. Um, then let's see where we're at now. The value of B approaches that. Um, somewhere. Yeah, here we are, I guess. Um, so that's that. And it's going to diverge uh, when we have B greater than 1. So what happens is it's going to diverge as X increases. So this is kind of the growth function. This is the decay function. And so, you know, like I said, the limit as X approaches infinity is going to go to 0 when you have that 0 to 1. But B is going to be greater than 1, what's going to happen is we're going to have two things happening. As x increases one time, we're going to go to positive infinity, and x increases the other time, we're going to go to negative infinity. And that all depends on our a. Remember that one graph here, a less than 0, we're going to go to negative infinity. And here, a greater than 0, we're going to go to positive infinity. So those are the two differences. Now here, we're both approaching um, the 0 going down like this or going up like this. But if you notice, we're coming from the bottom side here and we're coming from the top side here. So we can think as, you know, it's coming from the top when A is greater than zero and coming from the bottom when A is less than zero, okay? And so that's, that's the two uh, items we have here for growth for B greater than one. Now, if we want to calculate the percent change between two points of a function, is it's a measure of the relative change between the two output values, basically, is what we're looking at. And so what we have to do is we have to look at the output of x2 minus the output of x1 divided by the output of x1 times 100%, okay? And so if we look at an example, let's say we go all the way back to section 1.1 where we had the gas and it was f of x equals 2.95x. We want to find the percent change in price between six gallons and nine gallons. Okay, but well, what do we do? Well, we have to first find f of x2. Well, this is probably what we're going to call x1, and this is going to be x2. And so we find f of x2. So we plug in nine here, and that gives us this here first part, f of nine. And then we're going to subtract off f of x1, which was the six. So we now plug in six for x, and we have that part. And that's also the denominator. So now we plug all that into our calculator. When we do, this is equal to a half. We still take that times 100%. And so then overall, it's 50% is going to be uh, the percent change in price between six gallons and nine gallons of gasoline. And that's again, from our example, f of x equals 2.95x. Now exponential functions, they exhibit constant change because the percent change between any two points that are given input interval apart is constant regardless of the starting point. So, you know, on that curve, as long as you have equidistant points, the distance between here and here, you're going to have the same uh, constant change as you would from here to here. Or if it's decreasing, it's going to be the same constant change no matter which, which way we look at that. <clears throat> now the constant percent is change and exponential functions. So the constant percentage change for over one unit input for an exponential equation, when it's given in the form f of x equals a b to the x is equal to taking just that b part minus one times 100%. So when we had it, you know, with uh, any function, basically, we took f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by f of x1. But here, the constant percent change, because it is constant, is just that b minus one times 100%. All right, so I'll pause there and then I'll come back with some examples.